Well, hey there, people of YouTube. Logan with Hideaway Homestead here coming to you this evening. Um, it seems like here lately we've been so busy that uh, I haven't been able to make a lot of videos outside. And uh, most of them have been me making the videos as I come in here to tend to the seedlings and turn off the lights. So um, at least I'm getting them in. I didn't get one in yesterday. We had the mushroom inoculation workshop yesterday. I uh, got tons of pictures from that. I'll probably post some of the pictures. And um, I was going to do a little bit of a live stream, but things were kind of hurried. Um, had some people uh, ask for a live stream, and I think that's a really good idea. Plan on doing it uh, this next weekend. Going to tell people there's really nothing I don't think in a public space you can do legally uh, to get anybody in trouble for you know being on uh, video or whatever. But uh, we want to make sure that there's anybody that doesn't want to be in the video, you know, to let them know, hey, we're going to live stream some of the explanation that I'm going to give at this next workshop of, you know, as far as doing the process of inoculating the logs. So be looking forward to that. Uh, if you're interested in doing the mushrooms, it'll be cool to be able to see it. it nothing beats hands-on. Our uh, workshop yesterday was a huge hit. Everybody had a great time. I had a great time. Um, we took all kinds of garden stuff and sold that. Got to meet a lot of gardeners, uh, people that are into agriculture too. It was just a great experience, you know. Talked and met to uh, talked to and met a lot of cool people, and uh, uh, just had a good time. It was a long day. Uh, yesterday, I woke up with some bad stomach cramps and uh, took some pills, and that helped. But then uh, later last night, I guess the pills wore off. I figured I'd be over it, but I had some pains this morning. I've even had some this afternoon. And so uh, last night I didn't get any, uh, I get a video up just because so wore out. Uh, but you know, figured I'd uh, make it today. And uh, this, this video is gonna be a little bit of a, a longer one. Uh, unfortunately, it's not gonna have a whole lot of visuals. You're just gonna get to look at uh, my mug for the pretty much entirety of the video, but it is a really good concept for a video. And um, I think this might be a, not a series, but a reoccurring video just uh, because of the suggestion that was made. So Miss Sean suggested that I make a video of um, what are our homesteading goals and what are the steps we're taking to fulfill those goals and also um, what you know my systems that I've got set up cost and what uh, I'm gonna do in the future to lower that cost so uh, Miss Sean's been following the channel for a while so she, uh, she knows that I'm all about lowering the cost um, now as far as lowering the cost I I'm talking about monetarily like there's still work that's put into a lot of these systems but it's work that's gonna pay off years down the road so after the mushroom workshop we got to talk a little bit about trees i did a little presentation on that and talked to people did a little bit of a q a talked about coppice and pollarding um, doing living fences a lot of stuff and um, i got to talk about some of the systems i'm going to be putting into place so i'm going to start off with the goals though so we do have some specific goals uh, for this year and I'm, I'm a huge fan of Joel Salatin, and he's got a couple of books. One, uh, uh, The first one that's kind of like the beginner's book, uh, business book. And then there's a second one that's, you know, kind of more the advanced. The first one is You Can Farm. And the second one is Your Successful Farm Business. Uh, two excellent books. And one of the things that he talks about in there is he talks about goal setting. He talks about having, you know, to-do lists. And really, you know, breaking down goals. Like if you've got a yearly goal, you have that yearly goal, and then you break it into what you're going to get done every month. You break that down into days, and then you do like, you know, daily tasks to get those goals done. And that's something really we need to work on. We do have, you know, a, a pretty set goals, and we, you know, make plans and stuff. But I'm kind of the type of person that just goes at it and goes and goes and goes. But I really do need to set more goals for individual things to make sure that I'm also... Um, tackling everything kind of at, at, at the same time because uh, when you do homesteading or any kind of like small farming there's just a lot going on even if you only got like let's say you only 
raise chickens. Let's just say, you know, you've got just laying chickens, but there's so much to get that system into place and so many different things that you need to do um, to, you know, accomplish that. It's not like you can just say, well, I'm just going to focus on this. And then when it's done, I'll go and do the next thing. It's like, no, well, the chickens are still going to need tending to you. They're still going to need to be fed or they're going to need to be shifted through paddocks, whatever it is that you've got as far as a system set up. So what our goals this year, I'm going to try to give this in the kind of uh, just what it is that we're wanting to get done by the end of the year on this video, because I think going into like what our tasks are monthly and, you know, daily and what our daily checklist, that would just be far too long and it would probably bore some people. Now, um, breaking them up into smaller videos, uh, that might be a really good idea. But uh, anyway, some of our main goals is uh, right now we're working on the mushroom business. That's kind of been the main focus right now. Uh, I am building our house. So I've milled the lumber, I've got part of the frame up, and I've, I've really got to get that done. So I've got to start setting some more time aside to get over there and finish up the house. And really, for you know this before we get into spring real hard, I want to just get the um, structure dried in, you know, get the roof on. Because a lot of the interior work is going to be a little bit of a slow go, especially when you're doing it the way we're doing it, um, doing it without a mortgage. So... Uh, you know, it's 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 a it's a sacrifice, and you've got to you've got to take it slow. But uh, things have been going good with it. Gotten really far um, to this point. Uh, real excited to you know get that done. So that's one of our that that's kind of our main goal because we really want to get onto our property where we can start putting in some larger animal systems. Um, more than likely, just because we'll probably keep my uh, parents' property in the family between me and my siblings will uh you know possibly down the road be doing some stuff here too but uh the main goal is to get onto our property and get the wood lot going and stuff like that so you know getting the house is one of the main goals but the mushroom business is another one we're um looking at selling to markets as far as freeze-dried fresh uh powdered supplements mushrooms uh, right now, we're really just doing the workshops and trying to sell the logs to get some capital up. Uh, that's going pretty good, and uh, you know, I've got I've got two great business partners that I'm working with on that, and uh, things are going real smoothly so far. You know, that you're always going to have hiccups and challenges anywhere, but uh, that's kind of one of our you know main goals is to get that to where it's a, a viable business. So a lot's going to go into that. The other goal that we've got as far as you know business goes is uh, uh the nursery so getting up a lot of seed stock i've been saving up seeds from trees getting cuttings uh trying to get new varieties in so that way i can have a <clears throat> good selection for 2025 i've already started telling people that i'm going to have a uh a large selection for 2025 and, and try to do like a bare root sale so I'm looking at anywhere from maybe like five to 10,000 trees. If I, if, I, if I can get five, I'm gonna be super happy with that. But if I can get 10, that'd be even better. And I'm uh, gonna be doing a lot of cuttings next year and some root cuttings as well. Probably do some stuff like some black lo locust root cuttings. Maybe take some off of the really straight ones that I have that will um, be better for like doing posts and stuff not to get on a, a tangent about trees, but locusts, you know, sometimes they can grow kind of crooked. And if you can get any of them that are really straight, if you can get root cuttings off of them, you know, they're clones of that tree. So anything that they send up will be straight. So if I can get some root cuttings for that, or, you know, comfrey and then uh, hardwood cuttings for uh, willows, poplars, catawbas, um, uh, elderberries you know just stuff like that going to try to get a, a a large selection of that and nuts and fruits and stuff like that um so that's you know the next the next goal is that so that's kind of our two big business goals i'm <clears throat> gonna do some handyman business along with that and some you know odd jobs uh doing just kind of this and that so be working as more of an independent contractor uh, which comes with its whole set of uh, just challenges, learning, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, a lot of big stuff business-wise going on for this year and going into next year. 
uh, apart from that, as far as like our homes, homesteading goals, which I consider all those homesteading goals because they all revolve around the homestead. But uh, some of the stuff like just, you know, the growing our own food and being more self-sufficient, the house definitely, you know, applies to that, you know, being more self-sufficient. But um, as far as growing our own food, you know, we've started the seeds. We're doing a garden again. I'm not a real big gardener. Now, I've gardened uh, for several years. I mean, my first garden was when I was 10 years old. And now I used to rototill and everything. I'm more into um, just adding uh, to, to the already existing soil and not tilling. So um, we're going to do some big production. Though. I've, I've got a lot of tomato plants, got a lot of pepper plants, stuff that we're going to eat. You know, a lot of squash and zucchini for my wife. And uh, going to be doing some pumpkins, some watermelons. Let's see, what else have we got here? I'm going to have a look at some of the seeds here. I'm going to cheat. And some cantaloupes, cucumbers. I might have said that one already. But I'm uh, going to have a, a fairly large garden. I think uh, we're going to do some carrots and onions and stuff like that. that. You know, they don't do that great here in the South, but we're going to try to do a, a few tips and tricks that we found to get those to to do well and uh, grow a lot more of our food that way i'm planning on really trying to go hard at it this spring on my rabbit production and breed my rabbits on more of an intensive cycle because i want to put up a lot of meat in the freezer i want to try to fill that one freezer we got with rabbit if i can do it and uh, any other meat that we can find especially if it's more grass fed and healthier meats we want to try to stock up on those as far as the ducks go, I want to get to where we're producing about 200 of the ducks a year, but just for this year, we're going to do 100 ducks. And so that's going to be pretty easy considering that I've got, I think it's like seven hens right now, and I'm going to let all of them sit on eggs, and then just I'm going to try to process all my grow outs in the fall. And so what I'm going to have to do to get that done is I'm going to have to go in and put down mulch in their yard and put some rotation in there a little bit. They're not going to be able to do paddock shift because I just don't have a large enough system for that yet. Uh, so I will be having to buy some feed and, um, you know, bringing in grass clippings and stuff like that, which will be fine. Uh, I'm going to have some chickens incorporated in there too to be able to turn compost and stuff like that. But uh, that's the goal is to get about 100 this year and get them in the freezer. And so if we can get about 100 of them and around 100 rabbits, that'll be a, a really nice uh, stockpile of meat for us for going through the winter and into, into next spring. Uh, that's, that's, that's the focus. Probably going to be trying to do a little bit of fishing too and put up some fish if I can. Uh, that, that, that's just going to depend on whether or not I have time. I've got a lot of irons in the fire, and, you know, fishing's not always uh, something that's one of those irons. <coughs> Although, that's one of the things I think, uh, especially, I don't, I don't know if uh, the ladies have this same issue, but I know as, as a guy, you know, men can be kind of, we can be kind of obsessive about stuff. And so you just get into this uh, type of lifestyle, which I think it just applies to homesteaders in gen, gen, uh, general. You know, it's not necessarily gender specific, but, you know, you get, you, you want to do all the things and you just get so much going that it's, it, it, it can eat up your life, but it is enjoyable. So I am going to be making sure that I do take some time to, you know, relax a little bit, spend time with the family and go fishing, stuff like that, because, you know, who knows? I mean, I, not to be uh, dark or anything, I mean, I could die tomorrow. Any of us could. So um, don't let, like, you know, I, th I think it's extremely important to set goals and to work towards those goals, but don't let just one thing, you know, ruin your life. And constantly live in the future. I love planning for the future and I've always got plans for the future for everything. But, you know, we can live too much in the future and, and not live enough in the present. So I'm going to try to do that and make sure that I'm spending time with my family. That's one of the most important things to me. So it's the reason I plan for the future is because of my family. So if, I, if I'm not spending time with them, then there's really no need to plan for the future with my family because, you know, that future day will never come. Uh, but anyway... So I'm going to talk a little bit about my systems and kind of give an overview, but I think that it would be really nice to make individual videos of each system and kind of explain. And uh, some of my systems are getting into a little bit of uh, um, disrepair and there's got to be some stuff done or I've got to build new systems. So we'll talk about how long they've lasted and, and things like that. 
But um, as far as rabbits goes, so in my rabbit systems, the cages, I got a lot of cages give to me. And then I built one cage that cost me probably around, uh, I'd say $150 in material. That's the thing. I really didn't keep up with a lot of it, but I can give you a good guess, man. And then another one that was probably about $100 worth of material. And I like the one that was the $100 worth of material more than the $150 because um, I did the drop down nest boxes. And I, you know, I just haven't seen any specific benefit to it necessarily. So. I don't know that it's worth if you're going to build the cage yourself putting those in there. I've um, learned what I like on the cages and things that I need to do in the future. But uh, cages, you know, and then the investment of the rabbits, I bought originally, uh, I think it was four, yeah, I bought three does, little, little does, and a buck, and they were $15 a piece. So I had a total of $60 in them. And then I went and bought four more not too long ago, and that was like another $60, or maybe I think a couple of them were maybe 20 because, you know, things had gone up. Totally understood. You know, a guy had to charge a little bit more. Uh, I think they might have been older, too, so he had a little more feed in them. But I um, bought, you know, let's just say $60 more, $80 more. So we're right there to like 140, 140. And then, you know, you count all the feed and stuff. Now, my first rabbits, though, I fed them mostly just mulberry and from the yard, you know, mulberry leaves and then just grass clippings and stuff like that. And I did not buy a lot of feed at first. Um, and then I really upped my production on the rabbits and didn't up my production on the fodder. And it got away from me. If I had, you know, just like a buck and two does, I don't doubt that during the summertime around here, I could feed everything. I could probably feed everything now um, during during the summer, but as far as putting up fodder for the winter, um, I'm still not there. So that's one of the ways that we're gonna get our rabbit production up is I, I am planting a lot of fodder trees. I was gonna try to sell some of those bigger willows that I have, but I'm thinking about selling maybe just a few and then I'm gonna plant most of them. And uh, so I've gotta get that going and get those planted to get those fodder systems really and truly if you want to do it on the cheap you can go around and find local willows if you're wanting to do it for rabbits now and you can take cuttings get started with that they're going to grow slower so plant more but um you know the the willows do great and uh if you can get them uh i'm i'm about to be to where i really can't sell cuttings because they're all leafing out but uh, there's still some time if anybody was interested uh, you know just email me I, I try to drop my email in the comment or uh, the description on the videos sometimes I forget but uh, yeah they're, they're, they're great and I, I started out with a fodder package which was well it was a fodder and fuel it was two mulberries uh, let's see here, four poplars and two willows. So off those two willows, I wish I would have bought more. I really do. I wish I would have bought a whole lot more. But, you know, it only cost me like $65 to get that. And then, um, let's see here, other systems. As far as the ducks goes, I was buying them for five bucks a piece, little ducklings. And I was buying as many as I could get because those drakes, they get up big, and I'd process them and, uh, you know, just keep my hands. So... Uh, their, their investment really was very small because I fed them while I kept them pinned up. But then as soon as they got let out during the summer, I didn't feed them anything. As long as you've got some decent grass, uh, a waterlogged area like a swamp or a pond, anything like that, they'll do fine. And if you can supplement and grow stuff, like I'm going to be really upping the production of the water hyacinth this year. I've got one... Um, that may make it and I may be able to go without buying it but I'm probably going to just buy some because people sell it on eBay like from Florida super cheap. You can get like I think it's like 15 plants for like $20 or something like that or it may be 40 but I mean once you get them and you get them started and you can you know if you can buy more buy more get them in some areas use your wastewater like from your ducks and chickens and everything when they dirty it up and you change it out and clean it throw it in there with the with the plants and they'll they'll take up all that nutrients and uh 
you you can get a lot of production it's high protein the ducks absolutely love it i've got videos you can watch that they're just tearing it apart and it's a it's a, it's a super fast growing plant if you live in a, a place where it freezes it's not going to invade it's not going to take over like it does in, in florida and even if it is you know invasive in your area um, the thing is it's already there i mean if you're growing it in a little backyard system in a little pond where it's not connected to any other waterways you're not hurting anybody um doing that uh it's already out there and if you can if you can go out and and forage it where you're at say there's a waterway that's clogged with it you know go out there unless it's just like it's a place where like a lot of sewage goes and there might be a lot of heavy metals and you've got a fear of that maybe not get it there but if it's a waterway like that you know seems like it's pretty pretty clean water you know pretty safe you know go out there and get it and i mean you're helping you're helping the environment there with it you know not clogging the waterways so um super cheap to get the ducks and get them going if you have to feed them though muscovies do eat a lot and though they will waste a little bit of feed but i think that all that offsets if you compost and you use stuff um it's you know you use all the manure for fertilizer i mean it offsets because of course animals are inefficient they don't process anything because they need to add fertility back to the soil so anyway um that was a, a very long ramble i hope that uh it, it's enjoyed and um that maybe you got something out of it if you did please leave a like please share it if you've got any questions or comments drop those down below uh stay tuned on the channel if you're not already subscribed go ahead and subscribe because i will be doing videos about each individual setup and trying to go into more detail i've not kept a lot of notes on it but we'll be keeping a lot of notes in the future and a lot of um, ideas, tips, tricks, and things that I'm going to implement to make things cheaper and uh, you know better. Because that's the thing. I mean, there's sometimes there are times where you want to spend money because it's going to give you more value. So anyway, I appreciate all y'all watching, and we'll see you in the next one.